Okay, so I've been meaning to uh, do a video on this controller here for a while. I had planned to do this like a month ago, but life kept getting in the way. So we're gonna probably have to do a little bit of a jank setup here, as you can probably tell from the autofocus. I have to use my camera and my microphone's just on a stand over here. I would have had a much more professional setup, but uh, right before I went to record this video, my headphones disintegrated. N no, really. So yeah, you'll have to just bear with me because I've got a pretty jank setup here where I've got my phone on a little camera stand here. I'm going to have a old, like, 1950s factory light that's going to hopefully give enough light in the scene. That eh, should be fine, right? <laughs> well, that was one hell of a spark, but, uh, yeah. So... This is the Brawler 64 Nintendo Switch Online Edition, uh, special gold edition, whatever, by Retro Fighters. And this is supposed to be an alternative to the Nintendo Switch Online 64 controller, which has been, you know, uh, difficult to acquire, to say the least, requiring that you have an active online subscription to Nintendo services, and then if it is in stock, you can pick this bad boy up for uh, about like 50, 60 dollars, I think, something like that. So long as you still have your online subscription active on auto renew. Otherwise, you can't buy this. Do you know if they even have it available in the first place? So, alternatives are, uh, appreciated, but this thing's about the same price as this anyway even secondhand. You could probably just pick up one of these on eBay, and that's what I was going to do. See, I did, despite all of my collection, actually end up needing a 64 controller. This one I bought for Tizik, so this one isn't a part of my personal collection. So I've been getting back into playing Nintendo 64 games, mainly on my PC on emulators where I can get them in a higher resolution, maybe put some texture packs on and whatever, and I ran into an issue with both Star Fox and Batman Beyond and... It's something that I couldn't really solve. See, for the most part, you can get by with using a GameCube controller. You know, you've got A and B, and then, you know, the C stick can be the C directions. And then obviously you've got L and R and Z, L and R and Z. This is fine for the most part, until you run into a situation where you have to hit simultaneously both left and right, or up and down on the C stick. Doing the diagonals? Oh sure, you can do that fine. But how the heck am I supposed to hit up and down at the same time, or left and right at the same time? It doesn't come up often, but it was enough to be annoying and even got me killed in Star Fox once, so... I was in the market for a new 64 controller. And I would have been totally fine just getting this, but I saw this thing crop up while I was searching for them and decided to give it a look. And boy was I glad I did, because this thing has something very unique that I've never seen in a 64 controller before. Sure, it's got like all the same stuff and some mirrored buttons. It has some extras so it can be used for Switch Online. It's basically what you'd expect from this, but in like a, you know, more comfortable form factor. Although I don't really mind the 64 layout personally, depending on the game. Um, no, what this thing has inside of it, and this is absolutely psycho, it has a gyroscope. What? You... <laughs> You can use tilt controls with this thing. Oh my god, bro. Oh, it, was it going to be any good? I don't know. But for the same price, I figured, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to see what this controller's got going for it. So, we got it in, and uh, I am both pleasantly surprised and extremely disappointed in this controller. This thing could have been flawless. Like, this could have been the definitive way to play Switch Online, emulate 64 games, whatever. This could have been, like, the de facto replacement 64 controller for, like, modern machines and consoles and PCs and such. But boy, did they fuck it up. So, let's get into that. We'll get into the minor stuff, and then we'll approach where they really screwed up. So, the first and most glaring issue that you can probably see even from the screenshots is that this thing has an eight directional gate like the GameCube, where all of them are the exact same size. That's already going to inherently cause problems because the 64's gate is not like that. You can see that there's actually way more throw on the diagonals than left, right, up, and down. 
As a matter of fact, I think there's actually more up and down than there is left and right. So, controlling characters already feels a little odd. And this is only made worse by the fact that the firmware in this thing, uh, wasn't great by default. The dead zones were all over the place. They did have a firmware update that uh, was supposed to fix this. I would say it slightly alleviated it. It's still not as good as an actual 64 stick. But it actually kind of made it worse because now it just constantly drops connection whenever I'm connected to Steam. Unless a game is open, in which case it's fine. So as long as you're playing something, it's fine, but if you just want this thing to be connected idle, yeah, it's gonna constantly drop connection and resync. So that's already pretty bad. Um, other things that I really don't like about this, I can't stand what they did here with A and B. You see how there's a gap here? I keep missing trying to hit C left because naturally I'm used to this where it's just there. There is no gap between it. I don't know why they would make such a change. That's just baffling to me. Another thing that I can't stand, I think you can see it in the light really well here, this texture to the buttons that's almost like a fine sandpaper. This is terrible. Like, this feels absolutely awful to use. I would much rather just have the glossy buttons of an actual 64 controller. So, already, right out of the box, before we even, like, get into any games, it's got problems. But it actually gets worse. See... This stick, this is not the stick that this came with. I actually stole this from one of my Switch GameCube controllers. And why? Well, the stick that this comes with can't actually hit by default all the way to the right at all. It just gets stuck. And I'm like, okay, probably a manufacturing defect, but I bet I can fix this. I figured, let's open this up and see what's going on, and I'll show you what's wrong with it with the original stick. Okay, so, I've taken the screws out of the back of this controller now, and probably voided the warranty in the process. Let's open this thing up and see what the heck is going wrong. Now, one of the things while I'm in here I will say is a positive. I actually like that the rechargeable battery is just you know, kind of jankly taped in here and just has a little connector here. Now, oh, come on, you. So we're just gonna disconnect that so we don't hurt anything. Now that might seem like jank as fuck, but I actually really like that there's not just a, you know, standard specific battery size here. If this battery, well, sorry, not if, when this rechargeable battery dies, I can just replace it with something that's, you know, the same spec, and if it doesn't quite fit, eh, who cares, you just tape it in. Another thing I like is that all the screws are the exact same size, so you don't really need to keep track of which ones go where. We'll just go ahead and pop these out. Gotta be careful with these. These are, uh... These are heavy and only held in by the wires. This comes right off, by the way. And what this is, is a weight to make the controller feel like it's not as cheap as it is. Now, my favorite part, disconnecting this very fragile ribbon cable, which doesn't want to come out. But the button sure did. All right, so here we are inside of the little bastard, and maybe you can already see what's wrong, but we're gonna go ahead and mm, take this cap from my GameCube controller and stick on the original. There we go. This is the cap it would have come with. So it would be sitting in just like this, and even if you can't see it, I'm sure you can hear that difference. Even when it's not, like, tightened, it's still not hitting the gate. What the heck is happening there? Right here. This little button for the clickable stick. Oh, would you look at that. It bumps right into it. So how did putting this cap on fix it? Well, this one has a cutout for that exact scenario. Why? Because my Switch GameCube controller, I just dumped all the buttons into the case because I forgot the board wasn't in there. My Switch GameCube controller from Power A uses the same fucking part. Would you look at that? So, Power A knew to have a cutout so that when it rotates over the clickable stick, it doesn't come into contact with it. Actually, I don't even think that's on there all the way. Is it? 
Oh, no, it is. It's just not getting anywhere near it. Nice. I mean, that's such an obvious oversight that my initial reaction was, they must have just put in the wrong cap. You know, honest manufacturing mistake. They used to make these kinds of controllers for, like, you know, the actual 64, and that wouldn't have had a clickable stick. They must have just put the wrong cap on. So I emailed them about it, and, uh... No? This is the cap that was intended to go with it. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna have to Dremel a cutout so I can actually use the stupid included stick. Because let's be real, this thing is worn out. You can even see where the gates have carved some nice notches in there. And the rubber is just disintegrating. I know for a fact that stick caps don't last. I couldn't find any good stick caps for this anywhere. I contacted Power A first, because I like this stick and actually want to put that in here. Power A does not offer replacements for their stick caps, and they will not point you to where they got it from uh, manufacturing-wise. I'm worried that if I Dremel this plastic, because this plastic feels really bad, really brittle compared to even that, I'm worried it's going to crack and ruin the whole thing. So I'd like to have a second one if I'm going to have to Dremel this to make it work. Oh, guess who also doesn't replace these stick caps? And I know what people are gonna say. This is just to be expected from these third-party controller manufacturers. You know, they're not gonna replace the stick caps. They just want you to buy a new controller. Look, even though I have some beef with how they design some of their controllers, you know 8-Bit Do offers replacement stick caps for their controllers, right? Even for controllers that have been discontinued so long as the supplies last. <sighs> and you know what else else? This one was cheaper than either of these two. So I don't know what the excuse is here. And you know what's the worst part about the entire thing? All of this could have been avoided. I recognize this, you know, controller guy, right? That is the, let me pull up the number here, because I'm not going to remember this off the top of my head. Uh, that is the FJN10K-S1B1OK298N. It's got a really thin, but really durable, honestly, uh, stick. It's fine. You know, it, they all have a tiny bit of drift out of the box, but like, uh, controller dead zones, especially modern ones, are so big, it doesn't even matter. Uh, honestly, I know these are cheap parts, but I haven't had too much of an issue with them. The other parts of my GameCube controller started to wear out before I ever had any significant drift problems, so it's, it's fine. It's a fine part. I'm not judging them for using a cheap part here. What I am judging them for is not using the FJN10K-N1B1OK01, which doesn't have a clickable button here and is cheaper. Okay, but then how would you click the stick in? This is where it gets real dumb. You see, you don't actually need to have this stick be able to click in. There are two different modes that this controller has with a mode swap on the back. You can have this thing emulate a 64 online controller, or you can have this thing emulate, if I can find it, a Switch Pro controller that's just missing some inputs. So in one of the modes, you're going to have A and B, and then these act as a camera. In the other mode, you've got A, B, X, and Y, left stick click, right stick click. Or maybe those are backwards, but the point is these two our stick clicks. So there's already an input that does the same thing. They're not separate. If you rebind one of these, then this one's going to be rebound too, because they are literally the same input. A clickable stick that it does not need, which by the way, these clickable sticks are not good for the potentiometers. So reducing the longevity of it, um, adding a needless redundancy for, you know, this big classic style membrane button, like that's gonna break. It's just, why? You literally don't even need it. I, I just, I don't understand. But that's kind of the extent of my complaints with this. Let's get into, once you actually, you know, swap the stick on it or file down the other one to fit, what is the controller actually like to use? First of all, this is easily one of the most comfortable controllers I own. I'm not even kidding. Despite the sandpaper buttons, which definitely make my thumb feel a little numb after a while, the actual shell of this thing is very nice. And the golden finish is much nicer on this than it was on the Power A GameCube controller. 
much closer to the original kind of gold paint that they would have used on an actual 64 controller. I like it. Feels good. These shoulder buttons are easily my favorite of all of my controllers. Because one of the things I really don't like doing, especially in like racing games like Grip, I really don't like doing this weird little like two finger thing on the back that's definitely a PlayStation thing. I mean, it feels okay on this controller because, well, it was designed for that kind of stuff. But when I'm using a different controller, boy, uh, that starts feeling real bad. I mean, look at how much pull there is on this one. It just feels so awkward and uncomfortable to hold the controller this way. So usually I try and swap between them, but that can kind of put me at a disadvantage because, you know, if you're driving, you need to be constantly holding down this if you want to keep your throttle up. You know, in a race, you don't want to lose speed just to like fire a weapon or something. <laughs> this is so dumb, but you don't have to do that with this one because while you're holding this down, you can just hit the corner of the bumper and it'll register because this sticks out extra far and comes down here. So I can be holding down both of these and tap the shoulder buttons individually. <laughs> it's so strange, but like, you know what? It works. I like these shoulder buttons. And other than that, they're like big and meaty and they got a good click to them. I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of like tactile switches in my controller buttons. I like really stiff chunky membrane buttons exactly like this. I just don't like the actual, you know, face of the buttons themselves. I like it. Good shit. The D-pad on this thing is strange. It's not bad, but unlike the original 64 D-pad, which is kind of squishy and awful, or the new Switch Online D-pad, which actually feels really great. It feels like the um, Super Nintendo Classic D-pad, but like better. This one's a bit odd. Rocking it feels really bad. It's like very short, but the way that it kind of curves up like this and this very like, I don't know how to describe the texture of this thing. It's really smooth, but with grip. Like you're not gonna slip off of it, but you can move your thumb easily on it just by applying a little less pressure. If you glide your thumb over it, instead of trying to like press in the middle and rock it, it actually feels really good. I managed to at least match my high score in Tetris with this thing, so like, hey, it's gotta be okay then, you know? Not to mention, when I'm playing something like a shooter, I do really like having the big, easy to hit, like, D-pad directions. D-pad feels good, I like it. Start button, eh, same thing as these. Feels good, wish it wasn't sandpaper. God, it feels so bad to use. And then you've got your select and home for like, you know, your missing inputs. And like I said, you've got the little mode switch back here. You've got the screenshot button and the Z buttons are just buttons, but I do really like them. They're really stiff, but because of the way they're shaped, the leverage makes them really easy to press. So you're not gonna ever accidentally press these. And they got like this nice kind of plasticky funk to them. I don't know. For me personally, I like the way it generally feels. It's just like their design it's terrible. <laughs> Why would they make these like sandpaper? Why would they use the wrong freaking stick in here and then not even attempt to fix it? Why would they move B and C left so far away from each other so you can miss the button? I don't get it. Oh, and this little paint splotch back here, that's your sink and power button. So again, it's so close to being good. It's just really dumb decisions are holding this thing back. Speaking of dumb decisions, okay, so, I don't really have a problem with the, um, you know, Switch Online 64 mode kind of stuff where, like, you could have these be cameras or whatever, or you could have these be X and Y. Here's the weird thing. It actually has a third mode that this controller can identify as. So it can be a Switch Pro controller with missing inputs, or it can be a Switch Online 64 controller. If you plug it in via the USB-C cable, it suddenly becomes a wired Xbox 360 controller. Okay, weird, but there's something we could do with that and the Switch Pro Controller that I can't believe they didn't do. I understand what they're doing with these two up here being left and right stick click because there's no such thing as a six button controller anymore without rebinding it to something that already exists. That's understandable, but for goodness sake, when we're using all four of these directions as a camera and then these are A and B, 
you know what would have been really nice is having paddles on the back that are X and Y. I mean, there's all this space here. You could totally put paddles back here to replace those missing inputs. Because usually I'm not a fan of paddles on the back of first party or third party controllers because unless it's something that's explicitly meant for like the PC and you can rebind these back paddles to anything you want, it kind of doesn't make sense because on consoles, the paddles can only be rebound to things that are already on the controller anyway. What would be the point of that? Well, this is literally missing the X and Y button. Why would we not have paddles here to replace those? But yeah, that's basically the long series of things that they should have done better. And it's a lot. So how is this controller in practice, actually? And how is that gyroscope? Well, in the decompilation of Majora's Mask, for an example, this thing is phenomenal. This is like the best controller for that game. It already has native support for gyroscope controls with a Switch Pro controller, which this can identify as. All you have to do is rebind the buttons to match the 64 layout, and it's basically a more comfortable 64 controller with gyro aim. That's fantastic. And that's what this thing should have been. You know, a great controller from the start without needing to fix all this stuff or have to, like, bandage up my thumb if I want to keep playing this for a long time. Maybe I can paint these. Maybe I can put some gloss on these to fix it. But that's just yet another thing I shouldn't have to fix. But obviously, okay, for 64 games, it's good. That's its bread and butter. That's what it was built for. The gyroscope is weird, though, because other than the Majora's Mask decompilation, I can't think of anywhere you'd ever use that in a 64 game. You'd have to bind it to a mouse, which wouldn't translate well to a stick input, and it's a 64 game. You've only got one stick anyway, so like... What's the use of the gyroscope, really, other than just the Majora's Mask decompilation? Does that alone really make it worth putting up with all of this crap when you could just get one of these? Well, I decided to take this into games like Team Fortress 2 and Deep Rock Galactic to see how it does in a first-person shooter without a camera stick. How the hell was that gonna work? Well, here's what I found out. Much like Splatoon, you don't actually need up and down on the camera because it only can go so far on the gyroscope. You can't, like, bend your spine around and be upside down and shoot somebody behind you. You can only tilt up and down so far. Left and right? Oh, you could go in circles. So really, all we need to do is bind this to camera left and this to camera right. Oh, you found steam. Good job. And the missing X and Y buttons can be up and down. That's weird. But in practice, this thing kind of fucks. I would actually say that this is the best controller for playing Team Fortress 2. Because I even ran into a problem. Team Fortress 2, for whatever reason, wouldn't recognize any controllers other than the Steam controller. Not even the Xbox 360 controller that it was meant to be used with. So I had to use just a standard, like, you know, controller to keyboard conversion. And you know what? The eight directional movement I was stuck with because it's no longer analog actually works pretty great with the eight directional sticks. I absolutely had no issues with like miss inputs or whatever, despite the analog being gone. And you know what? This little bastard can rocket jump pretty well. The motion of doing a rocket jump is pretty simple. Aside from like clicking and flicking to get in the right direction, to actually do the rocket jump, we have jump on A and crouch on B. So you do that. Roll your thumb over it. That's it. That's your rocket jump. <laughs> it's so goofy. All right. So we've got the binding set up. We've got enough inputs now. How is this thing actually in a first person shooter? How's the gyroscope in this thing really? Because it can't be that good given all the issues that this controller has that it shouldn't to begin with. The schnippy schnippy. Oh, poor <laughs> you little. Damn, he got <laughs> fucked. Oh! <laughs> Should be on the car. For a second. Hell, good heavens! Dude, Sorry, I am fucking in oh. the air.
Fuck. Yeah, I can't believe I'm saying this, but this actually has one of the most accurate gyros of all of my controllers. I'd actually compare it directly in terms of tracking quality to the Steam controller. And awkward as this thing is, anyone who knows the Steam controller knows that that is a huge compliment. The gyro in this thing is phenomenal. However, there are still some problems with it. Uh, the first problem being that, like every modern controller except for the Wii U gamepad, and I guess maybe the DualSense controller, but there's problems with that that we'll get into in another video. Um, it doesn't have a magnometer to keep it aligned, and I can tell because over the course of playing it very slowly and consistently always wants to drift a little bit up. This is probably an issue with all of my controllers, but I don't really notice it because I like to use gyro in tandem with a thumbstick so I can do faster snaps and flicks, and as I do this, I'm kind of like unconsciously realigning the gyroscope. So it's not as big a deal for this controller as it would be for this, which doesn't have a stick. I still think it's kind of ridiculous that this is still the king of gyro after all these years and that nothing has even come close to it. But in terms of gyro in modern controllers, I would say that this is at least on par, if not surpasses a lot of them. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's a 64 controller. Now, I'm sure you guys have noticed that we're in a different scene here. That's because this is actually being recorded after I recorded the main video, because there's actually been some developments. Now, I didn't initially see this because it automatically got put in my spam folder and it just got buried in there because for some reason it wasn't organized by date. Um, but Retro Fighters actually did get back to me and I can't believe this, but even though I disassembled this controller, they actually did offer me a replacement controller. I emailed them back and let them know that it doesn't need replaced, the stick just needs to be adjusted. And after a little back and forth conversation with them, um, hopefully they actually go through with this. They mentioned that they will forward the information I gave them as to what's going on with the stick. So hopefully that means that future controllers won't have this issue because they're actually going to do something about it. We'll have to wait and see. However, uh, there's also been a more negative development in terms of this controller. Basically, I wanted to find another good purpose for this controller other than just 64 games because that seems kind of ridiculous just to have it for that. So I'm thinking to myself, what is something that only needs one stick, but really also needs a gyroscope and doesn't care that X and Y are missing? The Wii. You probably saw it earlier in the compilation, but this thing is actually fantastic for the likes of Mario Galaxy or anything that uses a Wii Remote and Nunchuck. So I've been putting a lot of hours on this controller, and that's great. I actually feel like this controller has earned its price tag, but putting a lot of hours on this controller after I've modified the stick has revealed a problem. Have a listen here. Do you hear all those squeaks and creaks? Yeah, the stick is, um... Oh, I gotta be real. It feels awful to use again. So even after I fixed it, the stick that this comes with is just... There's nothing I can do for it. I've done everything I can. I've modified it so it actually fits in here correctly. I've done a thorough cleaning of it. But, man, it just keeps wanting to have problems. It's just the worst. Which is a shame, too, because the thumb cap on it actually feels pretty good. God, can you hear it all the way from over there? But yeah, hopefully Retro Fighters meant what they said and are actually taking the criticism and looking into this. Maybe they'll fix the stick on their own. And hey, maybe they'll uh, listen to some of the suggestions of, like, maybe putting some paddles back here for extra inputs. I don't know. Given the customer service I got, I actually am looking forward to seeing what else they make in the future but I'm probably not gonna buy any more controllers from them right now. There's a lot of potential here, and it's got the groundwork to be a fantastic controller. So at the end of it all, I'm, I'm glad I bought this controller. I wouldn't ever return it. I'm willing to put up with some of the issues that it has and try and fix it myself. And if like your primary is emulating classic Nintendo games, and you kinda wanna goof around on the side with like maybe some modern titles, this is a fun controller. I think that's what it really comes down to. It's not a perfect controller, and it's got some problems that definitely need to be addressed in the future, because most people aren't going to be willing to try and customize the controller themselves or modify it to fix problems that shouldn't be there to begin with. Above all else, please, next time, 
put more effort into the stick than you guys did for the inside of the box that it came with. 